Hello to these and welcome, welcome to our lesson on graphing parabolas. Uh, yesterday we talked about transforming parabolas. Today we're going to use those transformations to graph them. So our goal, I can use transformations of quadratic functions to graph parabolas. And of course, quadratic functions and parabolas are the two words for the same thing. So transforming or graphing parabolas. We're going to start by looking at the very basic parabola. The very, very basic parabola is y equals x squared. And we graphed it in the last lesson, and it had a vertex of 0, 0. So here's our vertex of 0, 0. All other points are graphed in their relationship to that vertex. If we have a look, it doesn't matter whether I go left or whether I go right from the vertex. To get to the next point, I have to go up 1. So if I move left or right one space, I have to go up or down 1. And the reason why I say down is because this could be upside down if there was a negative value in front of it, like we saw yesterday. Now, how about if I go over two spaces from the vertex? Well, if I go over two spaces from the vertex, I have to go up or down, if it's upside down, four spaces. So over two spaces, I have to go up or down four spaces. Now, to get the next one, if I go over three spaces, to get to the next one, I have to go up nine. So over three, up nine. And again, it doesn't matter which direction I go. If I go over three spaces, I have to go up nine spaces. So three spaces, up or down, nine spaces. Now, hopefully you can look at that and see what's going on here. When I move over uh, four spaces from the vertex, uh, I'm going to have to go up or down 16. And here's what's going on here. Whatever I move up or down, I have to square it. So this was one squared. This was two squared. This was three squared. This was four squared. And if I move up or down five spaces, then I'm going to have to, or if I move left or right five spaces, I'm going to have to move up or down 25 spaces, which is, of course, five squared. And if I carry on this pattern, it doesn't matter where I go. I know that if I move left or right n spaces, I have to move up or down n squared spaces. Okay, so that's the basic shape of the parabola. It comes from the fact that I have to square whatever my x value is. And when you're done putting the points on, you just draw a nice, smooth curve through them. So we're going to take a look at how I can use that to just graph some parabolas. So here's the parabolas I'm going to graph. Now this first parabola here, y equals x squared plus 2, it has a vertex that has not been shifted left or right at all, so it's only gone up two spaces. So its new vertex is right here. Now that uh, there's no negative out in front so that I know it's going up, and since I don't have a stretch or squish, and we'll learn how to deal about those stretches and squishes later, um, when I move over one space from the parabola to find from the vertex to find the next dot, I go up one squared. Over two, up two squared, which of course is four. Over three, up nine spaces, which is three squared. And I can't fit that on my grid, so I'm just going to finish this off like that. And there's my first parabola there, and I'm going to put the, oh, bring that, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll just put that equation right beside it so that I know that that was for that parabola. Now, I'm going to graph the next parabola. This one here has been shifted left or right because we have the brackets there. And in fact, the, the negative there means that my shift is actually a positive four. So a positive 4 means I'm going to the right 4 spaces, and it doesn't go up or down at all because there's nothing after there. So now I know this parabola goes upside down because this is negative. If there's a negative out in front of those brackets, the parabola is inverted. So when I move over from the vertex, I'm going to have to go down. And remember our shape over 1, down, 1 squared, which is just 1. Over 2 down 2 squared, 1, 2, 3, 4. And it doesn't matter whether I'm on the left or right. Over 3, down 9, which is going to take me there, and we get that because it's 3 squared. And I can't go over 4 and down 16, so I'm just going to draw my parabola through those points, and that's that. I'm going to take this equation and put it with this one so that I know which parabola that was. Next, this one, the h and the k value here are going to be negative 5, comma 6. So that's my new vertex. 
So I go negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and up 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there's my new vertex point. All of my other points are going to be graphed in relation to that vertex point. And of course, this parabola is upside down because of that negative out in front there. So when I move over one from the vertex, I have to go down one, and it doesn't matter right or left. When I move over two, I go down two squared, which is four, and it doesn't matter right or left. And when I go over three, I go down nine, which is three squared and it doesn't matter right or left. And I think I can even go down 16 in this case. If I go over four, I go down four squared, which is 16. Uh, so that's nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, right down to the bottom. And again, I can draw my nice smooth curve just as smooth as I can through those points. And I'm gonna take this equation and put it with that parabola so I know what it is. Now, lastly, this one here, um, my h and my k values this time are going to be a positive 2, negative 8. So that's my new vertex. So I'm going to go positive 2, negative 8, which puts me right there. And now all of my other points. Over 1, up 1. Over 2, up 4. Over 3, up 9. Over 4 up 16, which will give me right there. And it doesn't matter left or right, so right there. And now if I can see all of my black dots, this is starting to get a little bit crowded. I'm gonna draw the parabola best I can. That's not really the best I can, but it will do for right now. And I'm gonna take this equation and I'm gonna put it right near that parabola so I know what, equa what parabola that is. Okay. So now, what happens if I have a stretch or a squish value in front of it? Well, if I have a stretch or a squish value, it gets a little bit more complicated, but we sort of start off the same way. We're going to plot the vertex, which is h comma k, and remember that the sign of the h is actually the opposite sign of what you see. So in this case, my h and my k value are negative 3 comma negative 4. So I'm going to plot that point. That's the same as what I was doing before, negative 3, negative 4, right there. This parabola has a positive A value, so it's right side up. So all of my other points, I'm going to go over and up. But we have to figure out how many up because this has a stretch of 2. So all of my Y values are going to get moved up twice as much as they used to be. Step 2 says decide whether the parabola opens up or down. If the value of A is positive, it opens up, which is what we already decided. And lastly, step 3 says, and it's going to jump up here when I let go, for a parabola where the a value is 1 or negative 1, there is no number in front of the brackets, plot all the other points according to this, which is what we just looked at before. However, if there is something other than a 1 there, we are going to multiply everything we used to do, this 1, this 4, this 9, 16, 25, whatever they are, we're going to multiply it by the a value. So in this case, when we've got a 2 out in front, whatever we used to do gets multiplied by 2. So if that 2 wasn't there, I would go over 1, up 1. But since that 2 is there, I have to actually go up 2. If that 2 wasn't there, I would go over 2, up 4. But since that 2 is there, I don't go up 4, I go up 2 times 4, which is 8. So my parabola is getting stretched out. It's getting um, tall and skinny, like we saw when I punched them into the Desmos graphing calculator yesterday. So whatever happens, we multiply this front number by what we're working on. Now, if it's a fraction, say there was a half out in front there, I have to take half of what I used to do. So in order, uh, in other words, that cuts all of my y values down. So it gets short and fat. And so you've got a lot of those to actually try. I've got a couple more things to talk about. Um, we're going to talk about finding the intercepts. Uh, so remember, an intercept is where the function crosses an axis. So this one here is the y-intercept because it's crossing the y-axis. And then this parabola actually has two x-intercepts where it crosses the x-axis. Now remember, to find the x-intercept, we sub 0 in for y. 
and then solve for x. Or to find the y-intercept, we sub 0 in for x and solve for y. Now these zeros are important there. And the reason that they're zeros is because when we're all right on the axis, we're not left or right of the axis at all, so it's got to be zero. So finding the intercepts of the following functions. Well, this first one says, if I want to find the uh, y-intercept, I set x equal to zero. So the y-int, we say set x equal to zero. So if I set x equal to zero, I get y equals two, zero minus one squared minus eight. Uh, negative one squared is one times two is two, so I get two minus eight is negative six. So this one crosses the y-axis at negative six. To find the x-intercepts, I have to sub y equal to zero. Now this one's a little bit trickier, so I put zero in for y, 2x minus 1 squared minus 8. Now, this is a process of getting x by itself. Uh, so I have to get rid of stuff off of this side. This x is locked deep into, inside that equation. The first thing I'm going to get rid of is this negative 8, and I can get rid of that negative 8 by adding 8 to both sides. So when I add 8 to this side, I get 8. When I add 8 to this side, I simply get 2x squared minus 1 squared. The next easiest thing to get rid of is this 2. I can get rid of that 2 by dividing both sides by 2. So when I divide both sides by 2, I get 4 equals x minus 1 squared. Now the next thing I can get rid of is this squaring. I can get rid of this squared by taking the square root of both sides. And when I take the square root of 4, I get 2. And when I take the square root of this side, I just get x minus 1. Now I want to point out here that when I take the square root of 4, there's actually two answers. I can get a positive 2 or a negative 2 because it actually has two square roots. And the last thing I'm going to do is add 1 to both sides to get x completely by itself. So negative 2 uh, plus 1 is going to be negative 1, and positive 2 plus 1 is 3. So I've got two answers which correspond to the two x-intercepts that we saw up there. Now the next one, I'm going to find the y-intercept by setting x equal to 0. And this one's easy as well. y equals 0 plus 5 squared plus 2. Well, 0 plus 5 is 5 squared is 25 plus 2, and 25 plus 2 is 27. Now, if I want the x-intercept, I have to set y equal to 0. And again, this is the tougher tougher one. If I set y equal to 0, I get 0 equals uh, x plus 5 squared plus 2. Subtract 2 from both sides, I get negative 2 equals x plus 5 all squared. And now I have to take the square root of both sides. And if you try to take the square root of negative 2, you're going to run into some problems. The square root of negative 2 is not a real number. Not a real number. Your calculator won't like you much. It'll say error. Um, you can't take the square root of a negative number because you can absolutely not multiply two things that are identical and get a negative number. Remember, two negatives. Negative two times negative two gives us positive four. Positive four times or positive two times positive two gives us positive four. So there's no way you can get a negative number. You can't take the square root of a real number. This means that this is one of those kinds of parabolas that doesn't actually cross the x-axis. There are no x-intercepts. And the last thing we're going to look at, this one here, this one's going to give us a messy answer. Um, if I want a y-intercept, I set x equal to 0. This one's the easy part, y equals negative 2. 0 minus 4 squared plus 3. Well, 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32, and since it's times negative 2, it's negative 32. Plus 3 gives us negative 29. Uh, for the next one, we're going to set, uh, for our x-intercept, we set y equal to 0. And when I set y equal to 0, I get negative 2 bracket x minus 4 squared plus 3. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, so I get negative 3 equals negative 2 x minus 4 squared. 
divide both sides by negative 2, so I get positive 1.5 equals x minus 4 all squared. Take the square root, and the square root of 1.5 is either plus or minus the square root of 1.5. I'm not going to change that. That's a nasty number, uh, x minus 4. And then when I add 4 to both sides, I get 4 plus or minus the square root of 1.5. And you can plug that into your calculator. Whoops. That equals x. And when you plug into your calculator 4 plus the square root of 1.5, you get x. When you type in 4 minus the one square root of 1.5, you get the other x. And these are the two things that you get rounded to one decimal place. Those are the approximate answers. And that concludes the lesson on graphing parabolas as well as finding the x and y intercepts.